Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hello, listeners. This is your host, Constant Taylor, and welcome to the show. Today, we have a very special guest, and you guys are in for a treat. Our guest today is Mike Hawkins. Mike has been speaking professionally for 28 years, and Mike's primary content is leadership development and coaching. Mike has the extraordinary ability for discovering and developing the potential in the people around him. Mike speaks both nationally and internationally and is based out of Breckenridge, Colorado. He has written seven books, including Leadership Competencies That Enable Results, Self, Setting the Example, Communications, Inspiring Performance, Others, Developing People, Partnerships, Leveraging Teamwork, Execution, Delivering Excellence, and finally, Activating Your Ambition, A Guide to Coaching the Best Out of Yourself and Others. Mike, that is quite a bio, my man. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Glad to have you here. Now, I'd like to kick off the show by having you talk to the audience about your business, your speaking business, other businesses, and what type of groups you speak to and the content that you cover with them. You know, I'd have to start with, you know, what am I really trying to accomplish? And uh, I see a uh, significant problem with leadership in our country. I think it uh, manifests itself in multiple levels. I think, uh, you know, in the government is maybe the first place we would think about in terms of leadership and problems there. Uh, I think the recent uh, statistics on uh, citizen satisfaction with the government and the Congress in particular, it's it's the satisfaction rating of like 13 percent, and so it's uh, it's pretty pitiful, isn't it? That uh, we're we're not more satisfied with our government, but it's no it's not that much different in the workplace. Two out of three employees in in employee surveys find that they uh, they they consider their managers below average, and um, you could even extend this constant in the home. And you know, there's study after study that shows, you know, parents aren't parenting. Uh, if you look at who's in the in the in the jail system these days, it's uh, primarily uh, people who have lack the parenting. And so, my uh, fundamental objective is to try to make you know my small dent in this uh, leadership crisis that I feel like we have in the world. And so, to do that, I've written these books and I have um, embarked in this executive coaching. Uh, I currently, for example, I think I'm probably coaching about 50 senior executives across the country, uh, public and private companies, uh, multi-billion dollar. CEOs and then smaller companies, but um, they have me uh, also come in and do leadership development uh, from a from a team standpoint. I do workshops. They have me speak at their offsites, and uh, you know I'm trying to get my word out and try to have as much influence I can in in helping this world uh, have better leadership. So uh, that's fundamentally what I'm what I'm up to. Okay, excellent. Now. Uh Self-improvement is something that is near and dear to my heart, and I did some research before we talked, and I was very impressed with your your background and the services you provide, and you've got an incredibly awesome and uh, easy-to-follow website where you can navigate through. Uh, One of the things that I saw on there was making change, and uh, you've got basically six steps to making change, which includes skills and behavior development, sustaining, tracking, awareness, and needs assessment, strategy definition, design, and mindset creation. Could you talk about uh, how you uh, coach individuals into making a sustainable change in their life? Yeah, you know, it starts with what is the desired outcome. And in in my coaching and in my consulting and even in my speaking, I will uh, start with the end in mind, right? One of Mm -hmm. Stephen Covey's famous uh, seven habits of successful people. Mm -hmm. And so that's what you do. And you say, well, I want to achieve this much uh, financial, you know, income or I want to, you know, make the world a better place or whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. And then I tend, as a coach, I tend to start backing up and, and asking, you know, what's preventing you from getting there? And for for a lot of us, I think uh, we don't we don't like to look in the mirror, right? It's it's kind of an uncomfortable place to to look at yourself and and ask yourself, you know, what is it that I'm doing or or thinking that's perhaps holding me back? And so the first couple of times you ask that question, 
of, of yourself even, much less a, a client, you tend to look at other factors. You say, well, the systems aren't right, the processes aren't right, the incentives aren't right, or, you know, it's, it's, it's so-and-so's fault. And, but if you keep asking why, you end up at this uh, place where you're looking at yourself. And, and even if it's not yourself, it's still a people problem. And so uh, I started my career uh, when I started this consulting business doing consulting. But as I probed and, and so you start looking at people, then you say, well, wh- what do I do with this? And is it just telling people what to do? No, that's, that's insufficient, right? It's, I mean, how many times have we told our kids to pick up their shoes and, and guess what? They, they keep leaving their shoes out. And so it's, it's not a matter of just telling people what to do and it's not a matter of just specifying the end goal. You've got to help people think through their thinking. And so as, a, as an executive coach, really I consider my job to be one of shaping people's mindset. And so I will uh, start asking people questions, and I'll try to start digging into not only their conscious but their subconscious. And I know this probably sounds a lot like psychology, and, and I guess it really is, but um, I'm, I'm not a psychologist. I'm just trying to help people recognize their thinking, and in particular the thinking that might be preventing them from reaching a goal. And, you know, then you get into this really interesting place that that could go anywhere, right? I mean, it could be uh, virtually in any domain or topic that you can think of. In the business world, uh, you know, the the popular ones are, um, uh, you know, delegating and, you know, what prevents you from delegating. And, you know, for a lot of business owners, they continue to try to control everything and, and have everything funnel through them. And clearly they become a bottleneck. And so, uh, you can tell somebody to start delegating, but that that's insufficient. That doesn't work, and and so you got to explore things like that, uh, and you got to get into people's thinking, and you got to ask questions like, well, what's preventing you from delegating? You know, what is your philosophy on delegation? And so throughout that process, you know, there's there's um, work that I do related to you know uh, systems and processes and all those things in the in the ecosystem, if you will, that um, support what we try to do as business owners and professionals. But the real uh, obstacle most of the time is you know getting into this thinking and trying to you know help people think about things in a new way. And so that's the the mindset piece that you referred to. Okay, excellent, and. Many times there is a gap or a chasm between what people desire to do and what their capabilities are. Does that ever come up? For for example, many people desire to go to the professional league NFL, but few actually have the skills and capabilities to do that. Well, there's another chasm. That's a great chasm. You're exactly right. You you referred to the chasm between uh, having a desire and having the ability, but then there's another chasm between having the ability and actually doing something with it. Mm. And honestly, I find that that latter chasm is the tougher one for people to cross. I mean, a lot of people, they know what they need to do, and they can actually do it. And for the most part, they have a desire. Uh, you know, the, the simple example would be, you know, for those of us that want to lose weight, I'm, I'm actually not one, but uh, there's a lot of people out there that uh, are trying to lose weight. And are they interested in losing weight? Yeah, absolutely. Do they have the ability to lose weight? Yeah, they've maybe studied it ad nauseum, and so they've got diets lined up and so forth. But moving from Wanting to lose weight and knowing how to lose weight to actually doing it is, is the big chasm, right? Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's multidimensional. When you look at, you know, if, if the overall question is what's preventing people from being successful, if you want to just make it that simple, it's, yeah, it's having the desire. That's kind of step zero. Without the eagerness or the desire, you won't do anything. But mm-hmm. then you've got to develop the knowledge and, and I would say really the mindset. And so, you know, what's your... What's your philosophy on delegation, going back to that example, and just make sure that they have the right mental you know, frame of reference in terms of delegation. You know, I, I can let go. It's, it's going to be okay, and you know, I can still follow up. Uh, delegation is not abdication. But then the, the, the real challenge is moving them from, from knowing to doing, and, and that's where I get into a whole other set of conversations, and, and I get people to create project plans, and we identify things they need to stop doing and start doing. We put timelines on it. And then I hold them accountable, and uh, that's what helps them move all the way through that process from interest to capability to doing. Excellent. Does the why ever come up? Because that's usually a big catalyst when you understand, you know, what's your motivation? Why do you want to achieve this? You know, that's the key, isn't it? It's uh, fundamental to really 
you know, delegating to communicating to anything, as leaders, uh, we have to motivate, we have to inspire, we have to encourage. And, you know, the old school, you know, perhaps was uh, the command and control uh, approach where, you know, in the early industrial era and even in the military, you know, the the, the boss uh, had a command and con- control style. You told people what to do and you expected them to do it. And that's what they got paid for. Mm-hmm. But um, today, and especially with the millennials and the and the, the attitude that they're bringing and the upbringing that they have, uh, you know, they expect to be motivated and they expect to be enabled and they expect for you to gain their plan. And so you start with the why, and um, instead of starting with the what, which is what the command and control world is, is you know I'm going to tell you what to do, and then they might even be very prescriptive, and they might tell you how to do it. Uh, you got to back up now, and and it's really the right thing to do anyway because we give more discretionary effort as you know professionals when we are bought in and eager and motivated to do whatever it is we're doing. So it's it's actually a great transformation. It's still hard. A lot of people would, would say, you know, I just don't have time to, to go through all that why stuff. I you know, I I know that's probably the right thing to do, but let's just cut to the chase. I'm just gonna tell them, you know, to put party in whole B. But you cheat people out of, you know, being valued and taking ownership and, and their ideas and so there's a real cost associated with skipping the why. So today uh, by far and away, the best practice is whether you're communicating or delegating is to start with the why. Why is this important? What's the problem that we're trying to solve? What's the opportunity we're trying to leverage? What's the impact of this? How does this fit within our overall vision? And if you will uh, really uh, emphasize that why, then the what comes real quick, real simple, and the how, uh, I mean, ideally, you leave the how up to your people and, and uh, you would coach them in how they do whatever it is you're wanting them to do, but you would by and large, let that be up to them. Uh, but clearly, it's our job as as the leaders and business owners to uh, explain, fully explain, uh, and competently explain the why. Do you have any successful uh, success stories, or do you have any successful case studies that you can share with the with the listeners as to how you took a, a group, an organization, or an individual from once from one stage help them help them cross that chasm and get to the other i do it every day uh constant i i had a call just before this one with you uh where i'm working with an executive who is moving uh a, a very very large company from uh one way of measurement to another way of measurement and um uh they're going to embrace the the nps the net promoter score uh, approach to measuring customer satisfaction and compared to how they measured customer satisfaction before, it's a very big change. And, uh, you know, we could all argue that, well, hey, that's just a measurement and people just need to, to, to sign up for it and be done with it. But the truth is, at any level, change is hard. Change requires more effort. It requires more thinking. And, uh, you know, this would be an example of, you know, something that I have helped uh, executives with. I mean, any kind of change you can imagine from new processes, new systems, new metrics, new people, uh, you know, being acquired, being merged. Uh, I've, I've had the good fortune to help a lot of companies and a lot of people through all, all kinds of change. But, but this particular change, uh, he's just getting started. Uh, so I, I can't tell you the, the outcome, but I, I can forecast the outcome. It's going to be fine. If he does what he needs to do, he's going to do a great job of moving his company from uh, this old measurement to looking at uh, customer satisfaction through this the lens of, of the net promoter score, which means you know customers are going to be your advocates and they're going to refer more business to you, which is what you want, right? As a business owner, you want your customers out there being your referral source. And so it's a huge benefit to him. I would say the one takeaway, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things we could talk about if you want, but the, the one key point I would say about change and leading an organization through something like this is to treat it like a project. And again, you, you just don't tell people what to do. As a matter of fact, even if you did tell them what to do, you'd have to do it a hundred times. And so it'd be a long process nonetheless, but treat it like a project and, you know, and, and then start with the why. And, and give plenty of attention to the why. Bring it to life with examples and stories, and and you know take people off site if you need to, and show them examples, and do prototypes, and and whatever you can, and then make sure you get a check in that why box before you move to the to the actual change in, in terms of what you want to change, and then ultimately how you implement that change. And so you can pull all that together: the why, and then the what, and then the how through an overall project plan. So treat any initiative. Uh, you know, like this one as a project, and you'd have a project manager, you'd have a project plan, you would identify the activities and the 
and the resources and the owners and the due dates associated with all the things that you need to do to walk your team through the why and then the what and then the how. Okay, excellent. I wish we had time to cover, uh, and there's, there's so much to talk about. The Before we close, one area that we haven't dived into is partnerships and leveraging teamwork, that, that specific uh, area. How do you uh, what what's contained in that, and how do you how do you help people with leveraging their teams? You know, some of us consider ourselves to be self-made, right? I I put myself through college, for example, and I'm I'm, I'm proud of that. It was hard, but uh, there's a part of me that wants to pat myself on the back and tell myself good job. But the reality is, is none of us are successful on our own. We are all dependent upon others. And wherever we are, uh, good or bad, uh, by the way, there's been others that have been involved. And and so th- there's hardly anything more important than, you know, this ability that we have to partner with people. And it might be internal. It might be external. It might be with suppliers. It might be with partners. It might be with uh, – I mean, it could even be with competitors. But then to create these teams – that where people, you know, offset each other's weaknesses, they leverage each other's strengths, they get the proverbial one plus one equals three. And when you look at the most successful executives, uh, I mean, there's a lot of cliches out there, right? Like, you know, they surround themselves with good people. That's not by accident. (laughs) That's intentional. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to be successful in your business, you got to, you know, surround yourself with good people. And that's, you know, there's a process there of getting out and meeting people and selecting people and, and partnering with people and building teams and aligning objectives and expectations and creating joint plans and, and then doing work together. And so that's what I think about when I think about leveraging partnerships is uh, just, you know, building your, your team and then going after whatever it is that you're going after, whatever objective you have as a, as a unit instead of trying to do it on your own. Excellent. Well said. As we wrap up here in the next 60 seconds, can you, is there anything that you would like to leave the audience with, the listener with? Yeah, I would just say be brave, be courageous, be confident, and look in the mirror. And if you're trying to accomplish something, uh, even if it's some kind of an operational objective, it's maybe a process or a system or a new market or a new product, uh, and you're struggling in particular, uh, you know, be careful about blaming all those ecosystem elements and be willing to look in the mirror and say, you know, what is it that I'm doing or, or maybe more importantly, what is it that I'm thinking that is perhaps preventing this from happening as fast or as, as, as well as I would like for it to. So just don't dismiss yourself. In, in every project plan, every objective, uh, you ought to be, you know, you ought to be part of it. And your own professional development and your own attitude and your own behaviors uh, ought to be part of it. How can people learn more about you? And if they'd like to speak to you, how could they go about doing that? Well, you can go to my website. It's www.alpinelink.com, A-L-P-I-N-E-L-I-N-K.com. You can also access me by uh, emailing info at alpinelink.com. And uh, I will respond to your emails, and I'd be glad to talk to you further if there's interest. Mike, thank you so much for coming on the show. That was fascinating information that you shared on leadership and development. Well, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.